Hey, it's a George Alano, and you're watching Jamar 84, motherfucker. Ah. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is your boy Jamar Hardy Four here once again, and we are here to discuss this latest episode of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars episode three. Uh, what is it called? Herstory in the making. I know that herstory is in the title. And I thought this episode was going to be somewhat of a filler just because, you know, it hasn't been an hour, hour and a half like the past two were, but I was wrong. <laughs> I was very wrong because they, I guess it's because there's no mini challenge and they just kind of got straight to it, uh, which is why they, I really didn't feel like there was much more to be needed from the episode, but there are a lot of inner workings and judgings and choices made in this episode that I want to talk about. So let's go ahead and get into her, okay? So let me go back to the beginning of my notes here. So the episode starts off where, you know, all the girls are returning from right after Tatiana got eliminated last week. And, you know, they're all talking amongst themselves. And they finally asked Katya who it was that she was going to eliminate. And I'm glad that they're doing this every week because it would drive me crazy to wonder who did the other person try to eliminate. And uh, so far, Katya, uh, or at least so far, all the girls have been like unanimous and have kind of voted, you know, together uh, because Katya was going to choose Tatiana as well if she got uh, if she won the lip sync. So it was doomed for Tatiana no matter what. <laughs> um, and. Ginger made a note that I want to say that my fellow friends over at, you know, the, uh, the RuPaul's Drag Race recap show on the podcast, make sure y'all go check them out. I want to say it was either them or the uh, the hosts on AfterBuzz TV. Speaking of which, if any of my AfterBuzz TV people are watching this, Jackie, I know you saw my last video of you watching. Hey, girl. Anyways, one of them mentioned that Ginger has kind of fallen into the background and when she was on her season or season seven she was such a big personality and you know she had so much camera time and I think that was because from you know the choices that they had like season seven really didn't really have a lot of characters that they could really work with but they had like a lot of polished look drag queens but nobody to really that had like that type of personality that can really go there like they had maybe what Trixie uh Ginger of course and who else really made me laugh in season 7 other than Akatia that was really it like nobody else really had like lines or a type of personality that really stuck so it was easy for Ginger to stand out, you know, in that type of environment. Whereas in All Stars, you got big personalities like Alaska, who's hilarious, Detox, who's hilarious, Alyssa, who's a giant character, even though she doesn't think she is. <laughs> She's really funny. <clears throat> uh, you got Katya, who's a fucking riot. Like, there's nothing, there's all these different you know, personalities and where Ginger just kind of gets washed out. Like, that's why really none of her runways, well, they only really had one runway because the first episode was just the talent. And even in the talent, her look for the talent was kind of eh. Like, they were talking about she had like a little frumpy, you know, between me down there area going on. And the song was slow, so it was kind of meh. And, uh... The Snatch Game, her Tammy Faye was okay. We didn't really get to see a lot of footage of it. So it was kind of like we weren't really, we didn't have much to go off of. But yet her runway was a little, it, it didn't look, what was it, latex? It didn't look latex. It looked more on the pleather side. Now, I don't know if that's from watching it in SD because I just realized today, y'all. I just realized that. I can get VH1 on in HD so I could watch Drag Race in HD on VH1. I'm like, I'm sitting here watching it on this standard definition on logo when I could be watching getting all the tea 
on VH1 in HD. So it, it looked pleather to me from last week. And so I'm like, mm, she's not really, I forget the ginger's there, honestly. We forget the ginger's there. And Alaska, uh, when they came back in the workroom, you know, Ginger asked Alaska, how did she make her decision, you know, to eliminate Tatiana? And she said, you know, both Roxy and Tatiana floundered, you know, in the snatch game. But Roxy brought it in the runway, whereas Tatiana didn't. And that was what teetered it in Roxy's favor, which basically means the detox wasn't even up for consideration, which... It's true. She really shouldn't even have been there in the first place. But I guess since they just had to pick a third girl, I guess, <laughs> you know, um, but that makes me happy. That makes me feel like, OK, she didn't do it based off the whole Alaska Talks best friend thing. And it did come out, you know, as the most fair choice. So that kind of, you know, eased our mind a little bit. So they're coming into the new day for the workroom, and you know all the girls are having fun. They're, uh, well, actually, you know this is before they left for the for the new day. You know all the girls are having fun. Like Alyssa's trying on Roxy's big hair, and Roxy's snatched off, and she's winding up her boot. You know, just having fun in the workroom. And Fifi is over there in the corner, pouting, talking about how she's annoyed with Alyssa and how she's doing all this and this down the fourth. I mean, they're literally just having fun. Like, I don't want to go in this competition and be, you know, a stick in the mud the whole time. And, you know, like um, like people have been saying, Fifi may have entered the game originally kind of like on the, oh, you know, p peace on earth, you know, let's all hold hands in a circle and sing Kumbaya. But <clears throat> each episode, we've noticed this recurring theme where... Fifi just keeps dropping these little seeds of doubt in people's ear. And we're going to get more into that as uh, once we get to the actual challenge. So, they get this lip sync challenge where they're the baddest bitches in herstory. And they get all these... What era is that? I don't know if they're all from the same era or not. I, the Victorian era? I'm not sure. But, you know, you get people like Mary Antoinette and... Eve and well that's, that's way that's not even in the, you know they just get all these different people from different time periods and so as they're doing you know the rehearsal for you know the little lip sync performance uh they always ask ginger you know ask ginger can she dance and she says no even though ginger's really not a bad dancer i've seen much worse um <laughs> uh she's talking about how she has to do all these different moves and you know this really big dress and fifi is on the side saying like girl that's a really big dress, girl. I don't know how you gonna move around in that dress, honey. She's looking over at Detox like, doesn't she have like a really big dress? I don't know how she gonna move around in that dress. And I'm like, why are you, what is the purpose of you saying this? You know that she probably can't change the dress. You know that she probably is gonna already have enough time trying to, you know, do what she has to do in the dress. Why are you making it a point to say all these negative things about her having to do in this dress? It's just kind of like how last week, how she got to Roxy's head talking about she shouldn't do Sofia Vergara for the Snatch Game. And <clears throat> she almost caused Roxy to, to be in the bottom. Like, <laughs> she's just trying to make throw people off their game so they can kind of mess up. So she can kind of stay focused and propel herself to the top. And I'm like, this is feeling like old season four Fifi, just a little subdued. Like, she's not screaming and yelling and being confrontational for real, for real. So she's kind of doing everything like on the slick and underhanded tip. And a lot of people are catching on. They're starting to notice, like Tatiana noticed it last week. Ginger mentioned it this week. And I think everybody is starting to see it. And eventually that's not gonna fly because you're gonna be have a target on your head. And as much as you've been trying to go to these rules about how you want this elimination to go, if you're out here trying to, you know, subtly sabotage people, people are going to try to get you out just because they feel like you're just a negative person to have around. So, I think your whole method is going to backfire on you if you're not careful, Miss Fifi O'Hara. And what's interesting is that she went on this whole tangent about how she was bullied on social media, how people wanted to throw acid in her face, and how people were trying to attack her, and they were trying to tell her not to even show up at her gigs. 
And an even more interesting fact that I need to, I wanted to find something else on. I feel like there was something missing or did I miss it? And she said Detox was saying evil things about her while her season was airing before Detox was even on the show. And she was mentioning how, you know, Detox was pr uh, protecting one of our girls. I'm thinking, is she talking about Sharon? Because Sharon's not from California. Sharon's from, I believe, Pittsburgh. From what Alaska said. I was, so I was confused as to who she was talking about that she was protecting. I don't know if I missed it. If you guys know who she was talking about, please leave it below. Um... But yeah, I was I, I was kind of confused as to who she was talking about, and I wanted to know. I don't know if they edited that out or or what. But Fifi was going on how she you know got all this flack on social media, but yet here you are <laughs> doing the same thing. However, you know editing. But then again, like Roxy said, they can they can only edit the things that you actually say, so or the things that you actually do. So if you just didn't make those comments, which I can't find a reason to justify making those comments, you're gonna you're you're making this bad, so you have to lay in it. I don't think it's gonna be as bad as season four, but it's not. I'm sure this probably isn't the redemption that you were looking for, at least up until this point. So we get to this challenge, right? And it's this whole lip sync. Now, usually the lip sync challenges of each season are my favorite. <laughs> Just because I like the costumes. I usually like the song. I like the, you know, theatrics of it. Like, I like the uh, Glamazonian Airwaves from season seven and uh, the Rusical from season six. Uh, season eight had the Bitch Perfect, which is probably one of my top, uh, my top favorites. And this one was cute. This one was, I enjoyed this one a lot too. I found myself laughing quite a bit. Uh, Alaska opened up the show as Eve. And it seemed like she was doing like a a remake of Britney Spears 1, 2, 3. Because she had like the snake and she had like the little, you know, pop star look to her. She didn't have the blonde hair because Eve didn't have blonde hair. But, uh, well at least Eve that's portrayed to us didn't have blonde hair. <laughs> um... She was doing really, really well. Alaska was do, um, you know, doing doing her Alaska type things. It was making it making it funny, and really started off the show with a bang. Then we move over to Fifi, who part whose segment I did not see coming. I was not prepared for it. <laughs> they all went into this like hard, heavy metal rock electric guitar thing and they were all sticking their tongues out and wagging and doing this I was like oh okay <laughs> all right <laughs> it wasn't bad I just wasn't prepared for it it's all I was just like oh okay well all right so we move on to ginger and it looks like every girl is gonna get their like showtime or their spotlight to do their each individual segment so Ginger gets on the little horse around with this big, you know, big poofy dress and the the horse. The, what, what's those things called? They had a name. They're like it's like a really old school toy with just the stick and the horse head. If y'all know, if y'all know what I'm talking about, leave that below. So she's getting, you know, she's doing her thing, and I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. Ginger usually is good at that lip sync thing. Like she did really good on her season for her lip sync challenge. And this one, I felt like she could kind of play it up a bit more than the Glamazonian Airways thing she did. So, I thought she did really, really good, honestly. So, I really had nothing bad to say about her performance. Uh, Detox, hands down my favorite. I enjoyed Detox, really this whole episode. Detox is the MVP of this episode. <laughs> so... Detox had the Mary Antoinette and she was back in her neon thing and she was uh, singing about let them eat cake and she was just giving like all the comedic nuances of the face and enjoying the lyrics and was playing it up perfectly. I know she was having some issues in rehearsal, but it was perfect. <laughs> I would change nothing about it. The outfit, she, she just did excellent. My Definitely my favorite. Alyssa came and was doing like a little bang bang southern, you know, guns up in the air type thing. And it was good. 
it wasn't really anything bad about it at all. But I just, it just wasn't the standout one for me. It wasn't the one I really remembered the most. But it wasn't bad by any means. Then Roxy had like the little Latin bit of like the first lady. I forget from who she's supposed to be representing. But Roxy did really, really well. The look was great. She got all the moves down. She had the enunciations. And she played it up really well. It was great. It was great. Nothing wrong with Roxy's. Uh, wait, hold on a second. My computer went off. Next, we have Katya. Or lastly, we have Katya. And she had Princess Diana. Now, in the workroom, Katya had like a dilemma about the train of her dress being too long. And so she wanted to shorten it so she wouldn't have to be dragging it all over the place. And then people might slip on it. You know, which is a common sense thing. So she cut it to just like a regular... I don't know if it hit the floor or how far the train went, but she basically cut it. And she was doing the Princess Diana. She did really, really well. And I mean, I, I think, I don't really think what more a person could bring to that role that Katya didn't bring. And it not, I don't, I don't it not be like overkill. Cause you can overact something and kind of take away from the whole, you know, purpose and people are kind of losing you and all the antics and I think she found the right balance between that I enjoyed it I think that they gave her like the most calm part because it, Princess Diana at least the the dialogue that she got wasn't really much at least to me I was listening and I didn't really feel like there was much that she could really do with it to play it up any more than she did um I think she did really, really well, you know, just considering what she had. Now, I want to talk about these runways. Before we get into the critiques and the judgment and what happened after that, I want to get into these runways because I think that this is my new favorite runway of all seasons. I love the futuristic aspect of it. I loved all the shininess. I loved all the glitter. I loved all the effects. This was definitely my type of drag that I like personally. <laughs> and it's definitely my top three. My, it's, it's my new favorite. My one before this one was uh, the season seven, uh, Death Becomes Her, where uh, Violet had her negative zero uh, waist and the oxygen tank. And uh, even Jaden Dior Fierce had like the barbed wire uh escape from jail type thing going on and max had the heart in the the box like that was my favorite up until this runway alaska yes <laughs> yes 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 she had like the whole character bitch she had the really long nails the updo the the makeup was kind of up and it was like orangey and blue like definitely one of my favorites on this runway. I want that, whatever that coat is, I want it in my life. <laughs> Next, Fifi Goddamn O'Hara. This is why I am here for this show. <laughs> that is going in the top runways of all RuPaul's Drag Race. This is the redemption that Vivi needed. This is the perfect runway for her to showcase this new cosplay uh, lane that she's carving out for herself. And it was perfect. And the top, the icing on the cake was the laser gun. Now, had she come out without the laser gun, it wouldn't have had the same effect. It would have still been good, but it wouldn't have had this, nearly the same effect as just the whole... Oh, it was great. Fifi, I know you're still as shady, you know, as shady as you want to be, but this was excellent. Excellent. <laughs> um, Ginger Minge. Um, this was trash from head to toe. The hair was a no. The makeup was eh. The the what is it? Because I'm not a fashion person. The cut, like, around the thigh, it was too high. 
It was showing, it, it wasn't flattering. It, it didn't look good. And then she said it was supposed to light up, but it didn't, or you couldn't see it in that type of lighting. And, uh, oh, excuse me. You can see it when they go, like, to deliberate when the dim lights, and you can see it, but on the stage, you couldn't tell. And it, mm -mm. No. No. No, that wouldn't it. <laughs> Detox. Yes. <laughs> yes, again. I told you, Detox was the MVP of the episode when it came to her performance and her runway. Because she started off with like a little blonde wig. I'm like, oh, okay. She's like all silver. And then she took it off and then was given like this bald, robotic, eye robot type. I was like, get. Yeah. Yes, Detox. Yes. I loved it. I, I just absolutely loved it. Alyssa Edwards. This was a bit left. Just a little bit. The boots were giving me Lady Gaga. The rest of the outfit was giving me Lord Zed from Power Rangers. And the tutu was so high up that it was just off. It looked odd to me. <laughs> the whole construction of it just looked odd. It didn't really go together. It was like a, a bit too much. Somebody, some, some alteration need to be made just a little bit. I think maybe if she took the tutu off, it would have looked more symmetrical, but something about that just threw it askew to me at least i don't know that's that's just my thoughts initially when i first saw it i was like oh that's a little bit much just a little bit i think if she just you know edited it a little bit it would work but it, it was a bit much roxy andrews okay now i know roxy to really give sickening looks on the runway she may you know be terrible than a challenge but she can serve her runway but she did not do that tonight what was that what it I, I that looked like something that somebody could have made and sold at Party City. Like it looked so cheap by Roxy's standards. Now, mind you, her neck up, oh, great, amazing. The hanging jewelry, the glitter, the glamour, every the hair, great. It was when you get down to the actual outfit, it was very plain. It looked like a Halloween costume. And it just wasn't up to the standards of what I've known Roxy's runways to be. And I was rather disappointed. Because I know that Roxy probably could have turned out something sickening. But she did not in this episode, at least to me. Katya's was so cute. <laughs> Katya gave like the... Oh, what's the character's name? Is it Princess Leia? Is she the one from Star Wars? I I don't know. I can't, I don't, I'm never a big fan of the that whole series, but I know that look, that round donut shaped, you know, hair. And she just kind of came out and I think that's who she was trying to channel. And I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was very well done. I thought the makeup was very well done and it served the purpose of the runway. It was, it wasn't my favorite, but I think it was definitely better than say a Roxy or a Ginger Minj. That's just me. Now, when it comes to these critiques, Michelle Visage. Everybody's already read you for Phil for what you did to Adore last week. We, we're, we're past that. Now we get to this. Michelle Visage's comment to Alaska when she said, oh, I thought you were going to, you know, Alaska is a an alien from uh, the planet Glamtron. I thought you were going to really, you know, go all the way with it. Michelle, first of all, I think she did go all the way with it. Like, it looks like something out of whatever planet Glamtron Alaska is from. I'm pretty sure that's what the residents would look like. And secondly, you said she's an alien. Aliens don't really have much to do with the future, though. The future, when we think about the future, we think of robotics. We think of automation. We don't really think of aliens, per se. So, I don't necessarily feel like her comment saying, oh, your character is, is an alien and it's supposed to be showcased in your outfit. I'm like, but aliens aren't really 
a part of the future, though. And I felt like if she was an alien, you would have said that aliens aren't futuristic. Well, it, it depends. Because some people may argue that, like, the Jetsons has, like, a... I don't know. I, I, I don't think that they're really the same. I don't think if her being an alien would have necessarily been uh, filed under futuristic to me. That that was weird. Um, did y'all catch the shade that Jeremy Scott, the guest judge, gave to Ginger? Because they were, first of all, they already read her for her outfit. Then, <laughs> then he said that she looked like she was going to play in Miss Piggy, Pigs in Space. I liable to have died and fell out of my chair. I was like, Ginger, he just read you down boots for your nerves. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, I know she can't, you know, clap back at him because he's a judge and she's trying to, you know, not get eliminated. But I was like, oh, he came for you and you couldn't, there was nothing you could do about it. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. So this is where the question, this is where I'm starting to kind of question the decision making upon this judging panel because detox being in the top makes all the sense in the world. Alyssa? <clears throat> no, I, mm -mm, not for a challenge or runway. Not that she was bad or the worst, but the other top? No, I think I would have given the other top two. Honestly, I think I would have reluctantly given it to Fifi for that runway. Like, that runway. <laughs> and she did good in the channel. Now, they did say she kind of faded into the background during the other queen's parts and she really only got a chance to kind of shine in her own but that runway <laughs> that's that is just what i that runway um if it wasn't fifi maybe alaska maybe alaska but definitely just not Alyssa. i didn't see that one coming um, but i was just like oh, okay but these times definitely deserve to be in there and then when they said that Ginger and Katya were in the bottom two, I'm like, what? Wait. They had and even RuPaul had to say that everybody really did really well as far as the challenge went. And so they kind of have to be nitpicky. And when they said they were gonna be nitpicky, they weren't kidding because they said something about how, oh, uh, Princess Diana's train was really, really long. I wish she would have come out with a huge train, how is Katya supposed to perform a number like that with all these different people on stage with a 30 foot long train? How is that how would that have worked? How would they how would she have been able to effectively sell that with a 50 inch train? That made no sense. Then they said, oh, she should have had her hair slightly combed 50 degrees to the side as opposed to 38 degrees acute in the middle. I'm like, what? What really? Y'all are gonna what real? Uh, mm -mm. And then they tried to say that her outfit was plain, but I'm like the the outfit was plain. I feel like because the highlight or the focal point of the outfit was the hair. Like she can't have this huge hair and then just have all this other different stuff going on. She would have looked like Alyssa Edwards. But then again, Alyssa was on the top. So, but then that doesn't make sense. I don't know. I just didn't understand the judging as to why Katya was put in the bottom or why Alyssa was put in the top, it was, I didn't, I, I was confused. So, either way it goes. All I knew was if, well, you know what? I'm not going to get there yet. I'm not going to get there yet. So, they do the lip sync and, shit, I forgot what song they did. Um, uh, fuck, I forgot what song. I had it in my head and it just left me. But, y'all know, y'all, y'all watch the episode. As I was watching the lip sync, I was like, Detox is probably going to win this because Detox was serving it. And Alyssa was almost like she was holding back. Like she was giving, you know, a quick spin here, you know, a little bit here and there. But I'm like, but Detox is going from the jump. I'm like, oh. And, you know, 
in the deliberation, you know, when they're trying to ask who they uh, uh, who they want to send home, uh, Detox was making it seem out to be like, you know, they're going with the whole idea that Katya got the most critiques about her outfit in the lip sync and her cr more critiques on the runway as opposed to Ginger, but I, I don't, I, I just didn't, it didn't make sense to me. I just would have seen other people be in the bottom as opposed to Katya, preferably maybe, I, I wanted to put Roxy in the bottom just because I did not like that runway. I think it would have been fair to put Roxy in the bottom, but you know, neither here nor there. And Roxy was the one who said, I feel like one of the top two isn't going to be in alliance with our whole, whoever the judges give the most critique to is the person that we agree to send home. And she was talking about Alyssa. And she was right. <laughs> so, they're doing the lip sync. And it wasn't until the end that Alyssa started pulling out the flips, the turns, the spins, the, all the, you know, the Alyssa things. And I was prepared with my remote in hand like this at the TV. I'm like, if she <laughs> reveals this lipstick and it says Katya's name, I'm turning this off. Okay? Because nobody, nobody, I'm sure, wants to see more of Ginger than they want of Katya. I don't have anything necessarily against Ginger at this point anymore. Because I'm over season seven. <laughs> but if I had to pick between the two, who do I want to see more on my TV screen? Ginger Minge or Katya? Definitely going to go with Katya. And I was nervous that Detox was going to win this and stick with the plan and put Katya home because she kind of got the most critiques, even though the critiques didn't make any sense. Or at least not enough sense to be put in the bottom. So, when Alyssa won and she revealed Ginger went home, I put a sigh of relief. <laughs> I was like, you know what, Alyssa? You earn more respect in my book. I, you earn some definite cool points. And if anybody from the RuPaul's Drag Race po uh, podcast, the recap podcast is watching up to this point, I know hardly none of y'all like Alyssa, but I know all of you, well, except for Joe. <laughs> I know most of you are adore Katya, so does Alyssa get more cool points for saving Katya? I want to know. <laughs> but that was the episode. Ginger went in the back. And this is another thing. She said that, oh, Alyssa sent me home because she knows that I'm competition. Alyssa stood out a lot more in this competition than you did, Ginger. So we forgot you were even in the competition, let alone think you were some sort of threat girl no not at all and when she got her uh video message on she was like oh i'm ready to eliminate a lot uh not alaska i'm ready to eliminate Alyssa out the competition i'm like girl we'll see i want to see how this revenge thing is going to work because i'm very curious because <laughs> this is going to really switch things up however they decide to do it and i hope they don't take out Alyssa for ginger my god but anyways uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this is your boy Jamar 4 here again. If this is the first time you're watching, I hope you decide to subscribe, like, and comment on the video. I'll be discussing the episode with you guys in the comments, and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye. Like, share, subscribe. Jamar Washington. Washington. Washington.